And the reason that we're protecting the environment is not for the sake of the fishes and the birds. It's for our own sake. Because we recognize that nature enriches us. It enriches us economically, yes. It's the base of our economy. And we ignore that at our peril. The economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment. But it also enriches us aesthetically and recreationally and culturally and historically and spiritually. And human beings have other appetites besides money. And if we don't feed those appetites, we're not going to grow up, we're not going to become the kind of beings that our Creator intended us to become. When we destroy nature, we diminish ourselves. We impoverish our children. We're not protecting, fighting, protect those ancient forests in the Pacific Northwest, as Rush Limbaugh loves to say, for the sake of a spotting owl. We're preserving those forests because we believe the trees have more value to humanity standing than they would have if we cut them down. And I'm not fighting for the Hudson River for the sake of the shadow, the sturgeon, and the striped bass, but because I believe my life will be richer, my children, my community will be richer if we live in a world where there are shadow and sturgeon and stripers in the Hudson. And where my children can stand on the back edge of the river and look out and see the small commercial fishermen that I've spent 24 years of my life defending their livelihood, their property rights, and capacity to earn a living in this occupation. We have on the Hudson River the oldest commercial fishery in North America. It's 350 years old. Many of the people I represent come from families that have been fishing the river continuously since Dutch colonial times. It's a traditional deer fishery that uses the same fishing methods that the Algonquin Indians and the Lenny Lenape taught to the, uh, to the uh, original Dutch settlers of, of New Amsterdam and then passed down through the generations. And I want my children to be able to see those men and women out in their tiny open boats with their ash poles and gill nets and touch them when they come to shore to wait out the tides to repair their nets and doing that connect themselves to 350 years of New York State history and understand that they're part of something larger than themselves. They're part of a continuum. They're part of a community. I don't want my children to grow up in a world where there are no commercial fishermen on the Hudson, where it's all, you know, Gordon Seafood and Unilever and 400 ton factory trawlers, 100 miles offshore strip mining in the ocean with no interface with humanity or with the community, and sucking that down hundreds of millions of dollars every year in federal subsidies that are not available to the small fishermen. And I, I don't want my kids to grow up in a world where there are no family farmers left in Oklahoma, where it's all Smithfield and Cargill and Tyson's food and Purdue and Bowbuilder and premium standing farm raising animals in warehouses and factories and treating their stock and their neighbors and their workers with unspeakable cruelty and, and using our environment, our soils and our waters and our air as waste disposal. And you know, and, and, and putting all the family farmers out of business, I can tell you something. There is no way that Smithfield food can can produce a pound of bacon or a pork chop cheaper or more efficiently than a traditional family farmer. The, with, with, the, the only thing that allows them to do that is huge government subsidies and market control that's allowed them to shut down the stockyards and gain control of the slaughter capacity so the traditional family farmer has been fenced out of the system. But it's not more efficient, it's not cheaper, it's much worse food. But they're doing it because they, they've been able to use, again, political clout to get a hold of these subsidies that are poisoning the rest of us and destroying our environment, putting family farmers out of business, entering the landscapes and turning them over to the corporations and driving the final nail into the coffin of Thomas Jefferson's vision of an American democracy rooted in tens of thousands of independent freeholds owned by family farmers, each with a stake in our system of government. And I don't want my children to grow up in a world where we've paved the landscapes and lost touch with the seasons and the tides and the things that connect us to the 10,000 generations of human beings that were here before there were laptops. And they connect us also to God. And I don't believe that nature is God or that we ought to be worshiping this God. But I do believe that it's the way that God communicates to us most forcefully. And God talks to human beings through many vectors, through each other, through organized religion, through the great books of those religions, through wise people, and through art, and literature, and music, and poetry, but nowhere with such force, and detail, and clarity, and texture, and grace, and joy, as through creation. You know, we don't know...